So this is Ricard in Cannes during the World Series of Poker Europe and I'm here with Jennifer Tilly. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. Yeah. And, Bonsoir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been speaking French ever since I got here. How, how's your French? Well, I'm Canadian, so I learned it in school. So my French is très mauvais, but um, people like when I talk, when I speak French because then it's sort of like, I guess it's friendly and it makes them laugh because my French is so yeah, bad. Yeah. Do you have like sort of a, an accent still, uh, like an American accent? accent when you speak French, or do you well, keep it proper? Well, I, I have no idea what it sounds like to wow. the other people, but I know they laugh a lot <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> when I'm trying to communicate. Yeah, okay. I can make myself understood, but mm. I'm by no means Jackie Kennedy. Yeah, you usually in in these uh, circumstances, you, you're traveling as a couple, but now you're yes. traveling alone. I know it's really lonely, and I've come to Cannes a bunch of times with Phil before, and so everything reminds me of him. Like he loves to go to Londine and eat the lobster pot pies. In fact, every year he comes and he tweets a picture of the lobster pot pie. <laughs> and then behind the um, hotel, there's all these little round things on the side of the street that he likes to jump over to get exercise, which makes Antonio laugh. So everywhere I go, I think about Phil and the things that he likes. And it's weird because then you start thinking like, well, what do I like? Yeah. Like, I thought, my first dad thought, I'll go to Londine and I'll get the lobster pot pies. And I thought, I don't even like those lobster pot pies. It's just <laughs> going to be depressing to sit yeah. there without Phil. The, Being reminded. Yeah, because he gets so happy when he eats them. So it is a little, um, it's a little lonely because usually when I travel with Phil, it's a celebration. Mm -hmm. And it's poker, but it's also like a party because he's happy everywhere he goes and you know at the end of the day we sit and we have a drink or a bite to eat and mm. you know mm. watch tv in bed and now it's basically at the end of the day i just go to sleep so mm. i feel sort of like a true poker degenerate i wake <laughs> up i play poker play poker all day long and you know at the end of the day there's never any parties or or you know mm. happy dinners there's just sleep in gym. Mm, is that right? <laughs> yeah. But still it's a nice place, isn't it? Oh my god, I love Cannes so much and I love this poker tournament, mm. the World Series of Poker Europe. It's fantastic and it reminds me of what it probably was in the original days, like the original concept of the World Series of Poker because the fields are very small. I think in the pot limit Omaha, I don't even know if they cracked a hundred people there. Because yeah. um, I, I know when I busted out, there was 90. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, like the tournament I played the other day, I think there was less than 200. And I think that's so much more manageable um, in terms of when you think of plowing through a field of 200 as opposed to plowing through a field of 2,000 or 7,000. I think it's just a little more skill-based and a little less about avoiding bad beat after bad beat after bad beat. Mm. And um, two of the tournaments I got very deep in, I cashed into, um, which should make me really happy. Like, right. wow, I'm good. But it actually makes you really sad because instead of focusing on all the things you did right, you think like, I was so close. And then mm. what happened? Mm. And especially the f two tournaments um, that I cashed in, the first day I was one of the chip leaders or the chip leader. And you go through it in your mind and you're like, I had so many chips. Mm. Where did they go? Mm. And it's especially bad when they didn't go. It wasn't like, oh, I had a full house. I had top full house mm. and the other person had quads or kings versus aces. Mm. What can you do? It was just like, really dumb stuff like this guy was trying to raise my blind and yeah. I thought I'll show him and I re-raised and <laughs> then he called and I knew he was trying to take it away on the flop and so I check raised him on the flop meanwhile thousands of chips are going in and the guy's got pocket aces and you know you sure yeah. showed him you gift him like 70,000 in chips and mm. so um, I was actually doing that in the last the last tournament I, th I think it's called the mixed in the mixed tournament yeah, yeah I was doing that on the bubble I lost so many chips on the bubble never having an actual hand mm. just you know doing Jennifer Tilly stuff <laughs> and fortunately I pulled myself out of free fall because I must have a tournament once um, one time which Elkie went on to win right. Elkie had a very small stack and I had a giant stack and he kept raising my blind mm. and I was like doesn't he know who I am? <laughs> Doesn't he know I'm the big stack? Doesn't he know you're supposed to stay away from the big stack? And I got into battle after battle after battle with him. 
And of course, I lost them all because yeah. he's Elkie. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's hard <laughs> to beat him. You never want to get in a battle with Elkie out of position. I was always out of position because it's my blind. And I lost about half my stack to him. And then um, I, I know everyone thinks that I had a really small. Um, the, I, then I, I just gave him the rest of my stack because <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah well the, what happened was he hit a flush and I got really mad and I thought okay he's he's not the only person that can represent <laughs> that he has represent that he has a yeah. flush that's, and so that's puppy, yeah. I, I he bet and I raced all in and he instant called <laughs> and he had a flush and I had nothing and yeah, you, know, you were the one representing he was the one with the that's what he actually had yeah. a flush sometimes yeah. Elkie actually has a flush so when I was um, sort of doing that same thing the other day I thought oh stop remember the lesson remember the lesson mm -hmm. of Elkie and I went and I did like a little sort of um, you know, tighter. Zen, yoga, I ah, had a okay. bath, I changed my clothes, so then you're like, new clothes, new attitude. Came back after dinner, was doing fantastic, all calm, the little kid wasn't tilting me anymore when he raised my blind, I just fold very Zen-like. Unfortunately, there were only two more hands and then that level was over and then oh. we went to the heads up. And I had to go into the heads up with less chips than my um, opponent who was in the running for player of the year and he won. But yeah. I feel like as many chips as I had, I could have gotten a lot deeper. And mm. it's a really strange thing where you can play almost perfect for two days and then all of a sudden you just play like a complete retard. Yeah, <laughs> like but, but the, 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 the difficult thing with, with the, I mean, in tournament with 100 people, you mm -hmm. have 99 losers. Yes. And one winner, yes. more or less. Yes. And the deeper you go, the more sad you are when you go out. I feel, it was a How really, can you win? <laughs> I, I was very, very sad all day because I went deep in two tournaments. Yeah. And I just sort of wandering around lonely like a yeah. cloud going, who am I? What is the meaning of life? How come I'm here? Isn't that serious? In LA. Yeah. I was pretty, uh, and yeah. you know, it's even, it adds insult to injury in that it's so sunshiny and beautiful here. Yeah. Everyone's walking around like, no, ha ha ha. Yeah. We're French, we're drinking rosé, we're eating cheese, we're smoking on the patio, and I'm like, and I'm, and I'm oh. nobody, and oh. I'm in cash, and I should but have still, gotten really you know, deep. Will, 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 you, will it settle for you in a few days or something that you will feel, I, I really did great, I, I did well to, to cash twice? I just have to be away from happy poker playing people, mm. people who are still in the tournament and yeah. talking about their chips and their check raises and their <laughs> kings versus queens yeah. you know it's like when you're around people who are playing poker there's nothing worse when everyone's still in the tournament mm. and you're trying to get a plane <laughs> home and you can't get a plane home yeah, it's difficult. so but you know what I do like it because one of my goals is to move up I, I love to go to the Hindu mob and you know now I have like French flags yeah, on yeah, the Hindu mob that's pretty cool and you know a couple more caches and I'm gonna move up one notch yeah and you know of course you always like to have a giant cash and leap over mm. 20 people but um, I think that'll come I've won several tournaments before and I'm sure I can win a tournament one day I just have to plug my leaks mm. I mean we met the first time in Monte mm. Carlo in December mm. 2005 right. what, what, how good a player were you back then compared to today what are the biggest differences I think the thing is I compare poker to acting a lot like um, acting sometimes or writing, also writing, because I write. Sometimes you're just in a flow and everything is going so smoothly and effortlessly. My sister says, it's like you're touched by God. Mm. And that's the same way it is in poker. Sometimes everything is just flowing so amazing and you're in the zone and you know what people are thinking and chips are coming your way and it almost seems like you know what the next card off the deck is mm. gonna be and you can do no wrong. And every poker player has been in that zone. It's mm. like the most amazing place to be. But there's times when you aren't in the zone and that's where the technique really comes in. That's where you just have to really look at um, betting patterns, look at probability, look at the math. You know, you can't say, my psychic ability tells me he has a pair of threes because all of a sudden your psychic ability isn't working mm. and you just have to say to yourself, well, what did he do pre-flop? Mm. What did he do post-flop? What do I know about this player? And you have to do it really mechanical. And that's the same thing with acting. So 
don't you can't always be in the zone sometimes you're not feeling it but you have to get the scene in the next seven takes and so that's where the technique comes in and you just very mechanically go about creating the character mm. because all of a sudden you can't count on you're not touched by God anymore no. and so that's where I say a tournament is a good mixture of playing very good solid ABC poker and then just being wonderfully creative and playing outside the box and just really knowing what to do mm. but you cannot be in that zone all the time I think it's impossible mm, and of I course. it's it's like athletes athletes have mm. a thing it's called flow and yeah. um, poker players have it too and you know it's every poker players dream to have a run where you have flow mm. for three but, days four days however long the tournament lasts yeah do, do you think that your poker playing has affected your career Oh yeah, definitely. It's com affected my career in a very negative way. In fact, I should be in LA right now, yeah. auditioning for this really good home box office um, yeah. project. But um, I, it's weird because I never really want to do anything and not do a good job of it. Mm. And I don't really want to be a dilettante. Or I don't want, want to be somebody who what is that? a dilettante or someone who dabbles. Somebody who uh -huh. dabbles in oh. poker. Okay. It's like I feel like there's not any sense in doing anything unless you do it right. And I feel like in order to be a good play poker player, you have to have almost total immersion. You have to be around poker players all the time. Mm. You have to be playing poker all the time. Even when I take a few weeks off or a month off, you come back and you're just not in the rhythm mm. of it. I think. To a certain extent, where I lost a lot of money on the bubble the other day is because we were playing hand for hand for three hours. Mm. So you'd play one hand, and then you'd stop, and you'd wait, and sweat, and be annoyed, and irritated, yeah. and then you'd play another hand. Yeah. And I felt it was really difficult to get into, into a flow. So um, I really... <sighs> You know, I really want to be a great poker player. I've got like a long ways to go. I feel like it's it's possible, but I feel like you have to put the hours in. And then I don't even know if it's a very worthy goal. It's like, honestly, when I'm acting, like I just did a play on Broadway for four months, People are laughing, people love you, they wait for you outside the stage door, you're doing a movie, they stop you at the supermarket, they're like, we love you, Miss Tilly, we love you, Miss Tilly. Poker, I really feel like people dislike me. <laughs> really? Especially, especially when I play. Well, when you're playing in a tournament, number one, what you're doing is you're getting in the way of other people's dreams. Other people's dreams yeah. are to win the pot or win the tournament or take your chips. And that's not your dream. That's your, not yeah. your, Their dream is not your dream. It's hard your to dream is for both. them not to take your chips yeah. and you know for you to win and for them not to win the pot and so I think a lot of times um, there's a lot of uh, toxic energy in the poker world yeah. and I don't feel like I'm a particularly pleasant person when I'm playing poker I feel in order to be really good I have to go into this deep subterranean place where yeah. I'm kind of troll like like guarding my gold yeah. and <laughs> and sort of hostile too like yeah, like that I, thing they're saying that. like you can't push me around mm. well, I'll show you raise my blind raise this I re-raise what do you yeah. think of that you kind of got to <laughs> go to that place the only time I'm really friendly and fun in a poker game is if it doesn't really matter yeah. like if you're playing a charity tournament you're playing with yeah. your friends for 25 50 cents then poker is just the most fun ever if the yeah. money doesn't matter to you but in a tournament once you're out you're out like cash games are fun yeah. but in a tournament when you're out you're out and maybe you've been grinding for two days and then you're you you desperately don't want to go out and you have the feeling you're going to go out and you start to get more and more unhappy yeah. and you know and it, it gets to Focus. the dealers come in yeah. and they're like bonsoir and you don't even look up you're not yeah it, let's say even if you're winning you feel like to say bonsoir come on, ça va. Yeah. it's really rude to all the people who are losing yeah. and all just buried yeah. in their own misery like you know mm. shut that chirpy girl yeah. up yeah. so you yeah. just feel like the really polite thing is to pretend like you're as depressed as everybody else but when i play when i'm playing in tournaments you're kind of in a constant state of of depression i even i feel bad when i knock people out yeah but but i mean it's it's an interesting thing because there are some actors playing poker. Yeah. I, I interviewed Kevin Pollock this mm -hmm. summer and, and Jason Alexander, and they were sort of they in some love kind of. It. They, I'm they, a poker player. 
they're in a free zone where they're playing poker. Yeah, they're not the actor. They, number one, they don't pay for their own tickets. No. You know, that's uh, whatever the website puts yeah. them in. Number two, they're so excited to get away from their television yeah. series, their regular job. These are working actors, yeah. not like me. <laughs> they're like, and then when the cameras come around, they're like, yeah. I'm on TV, I'm on TV, I'm going <laughs> to think of a joke. Because, you know, they're both really funny guys. Kevin had like an amazing run. He just had the best time. Actors, when they're playing the World Series of Poker, it's just like, it's a huge romp. They don't have yeah. anything to prove. No. They're loving it. They're and, just and, and they are allowed to be themselves there. Of course. Because if they're out in the normal world, mm -hmm. people come up to them and, and after a while, I guess, yeah, have yeah. you felt that, that you have to put up walls in a way? Do you know what I mean? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, are you always available to people? I usually, the only time I'm not available, it's like if I bust out of the main event or yeah. I bust out of yeah. a tournament. <laughs> and all other real birds are like, here she comes, she's coming her way. Jennifer, Jennifer, <laughs> when you're busted, yeah. take a picture with my girlfriend. You know, I, I, I do, but it's really, you're kind of like, when I'm busting out, I'm kind of looking for the door with the least amount of yeah. rail birds or fans. Because down here that's when you're really, really not in the yeah. mood. Like, I hope sometimes people don't notice me when I'm fleeing a, a poker room after mm. taking a humiliating beat after knocking myself out of a tournament. But if I do get stopped or recognized by people, it's not their fault. You just had like the worst moment of your entire life. <laughs> I, I, I just stop and, and try and, you know, not be too morose and, yeah. you know, yeah. Is it, is it but I mean, um, for, for me, I, I, I know you did Bullets Over Broadway, mm -hmm. was that the name? Yes. Were you nominated for that? Yes. Yeah. But, but, but when I found you, it mm -hmm. was in Bound. Right, right. Now, where do you rank that movie in, uh, among Those your... Those are my two favorite movies that I've done, is Bound and Bullets Over Broadway. Um, I think that they're, like when I think of the two best movies that, that I've done, and they're both really different, and that's why I like them, is Olive was a big, no talent, loud mouth, and you know, it's the incomparable Woody Allen, and period piece and the character was just very sort of crass and open and yeah. out there but I liked her too because uh, she had sort of a, a vulnerability like she really mm. wanted to be accepted and she wanted to be taken seriously in the world of actors and you yeah. know she had she had dreams so I, I feel like she wasn't like a cartoon and then Abound I really liked because the character is very very subtle and probably less like me in that she was very um, sort of submerged, like very uh, mysterious and, and conniving and and um, very, she was very much of a femme fatale. Yeah. And so I liked playing that character too yeah. because she was uh, totally the polar opposite of yeah. all of the characters. Very interesting in role, Broadway. very interesting yeah. role. Mm -hmm. And not easy to play it, now we got some. <laughs> This, yeah, this goes hold, for the territory. Hold for siren. That's my um, my film training. Whenever there's a big loud noise, you go hold for plane, <laughs> no, hold for truck, hold for car. But but now these days, I mean, there's so many poker players that mm. weren't around those days. I mean, mm. a lot of guys in their 20s, right. early 30s, they right. they don't know you from that, maybe. Yeah. Uh, are you more uh, well known for your uh, voice in Family Guy? I'd say most of when they sit down at a table, uh, people really like Family Guy, and also they really like the movie I did like 20 years ago called Let It Ride, which yeah, yeah, is yeah. about a guy Richard Drive is having the perfect day at the racetrack. I mean, that's kind of a classic among yeah. gamblers, you know. In the casinos, they love that. And yeah. when I go to racetracks, of course, you yeah, know. Yeah, of course. I, like, of you course. get free mint juleps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how is the, how, how much do you work with Family Guy? How often do you have to? Uh, um, well, usually they work around my schedule, and my character doesn't have a lot to do most of the time. I'll come in. You know, they'll just save up episodes. I'll come in every couple of months and I'll do three or four ep mm. episodes at a time. And, you know, I have a few lines an episode. And um, then they send me on my way. And, you know, yeah. when I'm, whenever I'm in town, they'll just c have me come in and do some lines. But it's really fun. I mean, I've been doing that show, that for about, what year is it now? I've been doing it for about 13, 14 years wow. now. Really? Because, yeah, I remember I first started doing it... Uh, what, 99? 99, 98, yeah. something like yeah. that. And that's the great thing about cartoons. You can do them forever. Yeah. I mean, you never really get older <laughs> in cartoons and your characters can do all kinds of things. Yeah, as that long you as can. you have your voice. Right, yeah as, yeah, as long as you have your voice. But it's really fun. In the beginning, uh, Seth MacFarlane would always be in the booth and it would be my goal to make him laugh because yeah. he's a really 
brilliant guy, but he was funny when he first started out. He was just a kid. I don't even know if he's 20 yet. And he, he was like the, the skinny little kid with glasses and really kind of geeky. Yeah. And then when the show got picked up again, he became like a multimillionaire. He got all super cool and, and suave <laughs> and polished and bulked up and muscly. Really? Yeah, just Did like, he keep his character? Did he, did oh, he, he keep his, his... He keeps his character. He's got a great sense of humor. He's yeah. very sexy because of his sense of humor, but now he's like, you know, the superstar. Has I was coming. his head? No, no, no. no, no but no. I, I'd say, I'm really happy to contribute to your vast empire, <laughs> Seth. And he just laughed like, ha, 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 ha. Oh. Then he has these parties where yeah. he buses in every attractive girl within a 50 mile <laughs> radius. And, you know. Because he can. Because he can. Yeah. So, yeah, he's he's really changed, but he's funny. He did an, I did an episode once where um, he put likes to put a lot of inside jokes in his cartoons. So I did an episode once where at the end of the episode, someone said to Bonnie, hey, Bunny, are we going to see you around again? And she goes, yeah, probably. I have to do this voiceover work to support my gambling habit. <laughs> <laughs> so fitting. I was like, hey. <laughs> he wrote that for you. <laughs> hey. Very funny, Mr. McFarland. I also okay. did an episode of um, uh, The Simpsons where I yeah. played myself. Um, Lisa Simpson develops an online gambling habit right. and um, she rents a video or buys a video, which is me yeah. teaching her how to play poker. So that was fun. Well, that, that was fun, huh? Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen it yet. I don't think it's come out yet, but yeah. I'm playing myself. I, I heard about it. I heard yeah. about it. So what are you, um, what are you doing uh, like in a few years? Are you going to continue to play mostly or going to try to work more as an actress? I don't really know. It's like real, when I was on this kind of incredible run, I thought it was going, oh, you should come to San Remo, you know, mm. those Italians, you knock them over like bowling pins yeah. and it's a fantastic town. I felt like, oh, Thelma and Louise, I wanted to just keep going, you know, yeah. into the movie, she goes, into the just yeah. keep going and then go right over the cliff. Yeah. And that's what I felt like, cause <laughs> I was like, forget the home box office audition and you know forget this and I'm just gonna go to San Remo and yeah. I'm gonna win that tournament yeah. you just start to you know it, it's really once you start getting back into it that's all you want to do yeah but um like a like a, a bit of a drug is it it's a bit of a drug, yeah, but I, I kept my apartment in New York when I was doing the play, I loved it, I hardly played any poker at all, and I, I honestly do think poker is a young person's game, I mean, I see these kids walking around, they're just as happy as can be, they're all like renting apartments, yeah, they have no obligations anywhere, party. yeah, they're just having the best time of their life, and meanwhile, Phil doesn't like to travel, and Phil's way younger than me, because he's like, Jennifer, we're too old to be traveling around the world, he's like, we are, should be no. in LA, yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, I, I think just, you know, he, but he he has his things that he likes to do. But I do feel like that. Like, here I am in Canada, and I've busted out of the main event. I can't get home. I want to go <laughs> home. But if I was playing in Las Vegas, you know, I could get home yeah. really easy. So uh, it is more difficult. The, I think the European, John, you know, I think you really have to be kind of hardcore to follow the EPT yeah. and go to Barcelona and San Remo and Cannes mm. and aviation. I think... Um, probably in the future, Phil and I are going to stick closer to home. We'll do like yeah. L.A., Las Vegas. You know, every once in a while we'll come <laughs> to Europe. Yeah. But, but, we, but because if you're going, a lot of Americans and, and so on, if they're going to one tournament in Europe, this is the one. Yeah. Especially since you have like four, five, six events or this something. This is a fantastic yeah. tournament. Um, what I would suggest, I think they should have add about three more tournaments. That's uh, what I think, just to make it, it worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, there's only yeah. six bracelet events, yeah. and you know, it's a really a long ways to come wow. for just six yeah. six tournaments. You, you have some jet lag to take care of, and you have a few that you need you need to come here. You, you prefer to come here at least the day before it starts. Yeah. So it takes a lot of time as well, right? Yeah, and then there's there's like one one k tournament. Yeah. Um, I, w I would suggest they have another like m medium sized tournament, like mm. a three k or a five k. With the bigger field as well, then, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. The the field was kind of small this year. That's why mm. I really liked about it. But mm. I have to say, it's really well run. The people are mm. so nice. The dealers are really, really, really good. They yeah. have, the, you know, they're very professional and. Mm good at what they do and you know I I really I've, I've really enjoyed it and not just because for the most time 
part of so the tournament I had huge stacks of chips in front yeah. of me. Then it's you fun. Know, <laughs> I enjoyed it even yeah. when I was yeah. yesterday when I was playing the main event. I was always oscillating between twenty and thirty thousand chips. The starting stack is thirty, and I was still having a really good time. Mm. I had a good time right up until I went out. Mm. Um, and then I still felt kind of good, I think, because I had a glass of wine at dinner. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I went out, but I got it in good. What can yeah, you do? That's yeah. poker. <laughs> then I went up to my room. And then what happens is if you feel good about how you went out, you start going backwards in the tournament. And you find a hand that you misplayed. And then you mm. focus on that. You're yeah. like, well, I wouldn't have been short stacked yeah. if I hadn't done that at, you oh, know, so, yeah. 4.30 in the afternoon. You forget afternoon. about the, the 14 hands you played really well, right? You have to yeah. feel really bad about yourself. I think yeah. it's a rule of poker. You're not allowed to feel good mm. about yourself. Mm. Unless you win, then you can feel good for about three days. And then you have to start feeling bad about mm. yourself again because you'll go on two plus two and read yeah. that it was a fluke and a one time. And then you feel like you have to win another one to prove that mm. it's not a fluke. So, uh, yeah, so poker, there's just a little bit of feeling good and a lot of feeling bad. Is it? Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the feeling good is so good, isn't it? When you when you do something really great and you go really deep, or yeah, and you have a big stack and you go you go to sleep and uh, prepare for the next day, and that thrill is hard to find somewhere else, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they say the most potent addictive form of validation is intermittent validation. That's where, like, lots of times women are in abusive relationships, or you know, or people like because or drugs or whatever yeah. I mean drugs you take it you feel really good and then you feel really bad yeah I, I mean I wouldn't know but <laughs> what I've heard yeah. and you feel really bad for like for example I like to drink red wine drink red wine get a migraine wake up the next morning saying I'm never gonna drink red wine again take a migraine pill all right, later that afternoon, I'm feeling fine. I drink some red wine again. And that's what poker is like. You, you actually, you, you know are feeling, hurt. You, you are feeling good and it does hurt. But the times that you feel good, it makes up for the times that it hurts. I, I think too, I mean, you shouldn't forget about the time leading up to the tournament because the excitement before you start and the mm -hmm. thoughts and uh, the expectations, that's mm -hmm. also a good feeling, you know, before you start And when you you're making a pot, you get that little singing feeling like, yeah. I'm going to win, I'm going to win. <laughs> yeah. You're honestly, the, when I started the main event yesterday morning, I right off the bat flopped, I think, a straight or something, something crazy. I picked up 4,000 in chips, raking them in. I'm like, it's starting, it's starting, yeah. I'm going to win, I'm going to win. I was thinking of the things I saw in the windows of Bulgari that I was going to buy with my main event <laughs> winnings. Bulgari, and yeah, wondering. Yeah. Bulgari and wondering what the bracelet's gonna look like and yeah. I'd have to take some links out and you know so I really had a happy daydream for about 45 minutes <laughs> till I bluffed off 10,000 chips because you know I'm so omnipresent and I yeah. know everything and yeah. I just knew the guy would fold his weak ace which he didn't then I had to pretend like I had an ace too but he probably had a full house so uh, you know then but but it, it's great. It is a good feeling when, mm. when you think that some... Because how in real life, in real life, nothing very special happens. You know, right. day to day, you wake up, you know, it's gonna, you're going to go meet your friends mm. for lunch, and then you're going to do this, and pick up the kids after yeah. school, if you have kids. I'm trying yeah. to imagine what a normal life is like. <laughs> but, you know, but in poker, you can wake up Monday morning, and by Thursday morning, you're a millionaire. Yeah. Or famous. Yeah. So that's the thing that I think is yeah. very appealing, that sort of... It's a bit of, a bit of wonderland in a way, you know, mm. you go into this bubble, mm -hmm. um, fittingly, mm. uh, where you just enjoy with, with other people and the competition. It's, it's hard to find anywhere else something similar, actually. And you know, poker players are really, really nice, like, that's, oh that's, my god, these kids are so smart and yeah. nice and friendly. The other day I was eating alone, like, in a restaurant, not like boo-hoo-hoo -hoo eating no, alone. No. I'm trying to get my head, <laughs> my head on straight. I was the chip leader. I'm like, don't fuck it up, don't fuck it up. I probably can't say that, right? Yeah, you can say that. Of course, <laughs> so, you can say that. So, and these two kids across the street that are barely new, they came over and they go, Jennifer, do you want to come join us for dinner? They're like, oh, there's Jennifer Tilly and her boyfriend is riding a motorcycle across the country. And she's probably really lonely. And I thought, oh, that's so nice. That's and, nice. And yeah. I said, well, you know, no, thank you, because.
because, you know, I feel like eating Thai food, but thanks. And I thought, that's really nice. And I yeah. actually, since I've been here, I think because I did an interview on the first day saying that I was here by myself, I've had people inviting me yeah. to dinner. And I've had dinner with some people that I didn't know very well, mm. and they're very funny and entertaining mm. and friendly. So Yeah, pe people, you know, so many people that has no clue about poker, mm -hmm. more or less. And a lot of my friends that are not interested in poker ask me, what, what keeps you there? I've been here for many years now, mm -hmm. and I say it's people. Actually, it's a very, very strong community. Yeah, and it's it's the, they are interested in other stuff. Okay, yeah. a small group is only interested in equity and uh, and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But it's fun to talk about other stuff because they're smart. Smart people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in L. A., all anybody ever talks about is. Well, all the in the movie industry, yeah. they just all talk about the film yeah. industry yeah. and actors and themselves, and, yeah, themselves and, 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 and themselves, yeah. yeah. But you know, but it it's it really is a very strong community, and also the reporters too. Like you mm. know, the guys who come around for poker news and some mm. of the other, mm. um, you know, me, you. I was like, I'm like po po poker uh, tube. Uh, poker tube. I was like poker list, poker tube. I thought, oh, yeah. this would be really clever, and I'll just throw out who I'm talking to, like like those great people from Poker Tube. Oh, I can't remember the name. I like Poker Tube, by the yeah, way. I, yeah. That's where I see a lot of my, the English TV that I'm on. It goes straight yeah. to Poker Tube. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I work for a Swedish magazine called Poker Magazine as well. We should do something. Uh -huh. When are you going back? Now, have you decided? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get out of here. I wanted to leave yesterday. Oh my god, I don't know. I was exploring my options last night. They're like, we can fly you to Gatwick and you stay overnight and then you have to get on a train. Oh, that's to horrible. Hebrew. No, no, I'm no. Like, You're not no. going to do that. And it's really expensive. I have a ticket, but for, it, for some reason they made it for October 7th. I might be here until October 7th. And then the other one's like, Oh, you can fly to Madrid, and we'll go get send you home in Iberian Airlines. You have to wake up at three in the morning, and it's like a trillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you have to win first place money to get home. There's the worst places to be, right? Yeah, I suppose. Be stuck at. I just I want to be with I want to be with Phil. Yeah. He's at the Commerce Casino. He said, I just talked to him. He goes. Jennifer, you need to be here because I'm just degenning it up. He says, because he usually goes to the commerce and he tries to get home like in time to say goodnight to me. Yeah. But he's like, there's nobody to go home to. So I, I might as well here sit here. <laughs> yeah. Beat the record of staying awake. Right, he he right. beat that record, right? No, in London a few years ago. No, they ago. said somebody beat, yeah, Phil beat the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. That Paul Zimbler did. Yeah. Um, somebody claims they broke it, but it wasn't yeah. official. You know, yeah. like a lot of people are saying, oh, we broke in in a hotel yeah. room in uh, Antwerp. Or, yeah, well, Oh, I broke it, you know. <laughs> because that was very official. It was yeah. all filmed. He, and he is in the Guinness Book of World that's Records. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What would you like to be in the Guinness Book of World Records for? Winning the most tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> Win, winning the biggest tournament prize ever, maybe? That's uh, going to be difficult. Uh, let's see. The Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. I think that, Antonio that, that went in there Antonio. now. Yeah, yeah, you have to top Antonio, the $18 yeah. million dollar man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Jennifer, it's really nice meeting you. It's really nice to meet you too. Yeah, and good luck with your stay here. Maybe we'll do, we'll uh, have dinner someday. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's right. If I'll probably you're gonna see me like five days from now, still wandering yeah. the streets, crying <laughs> in rags. I yeah. can't get home. <laughs> All right, I see you soon. All right, thanks.